I'm so glad that I have the time to review my gain table. The table, which measures 36 inches square by 29 and a half inches tall, is primarily made of African mahogany, but there are a total of 15 species of wood used in this project. Many of the key elements of the table's design are signature motifs of federal style furniture, and more specifically, the Newport, Rhode Island cabinet makers of Townsend of Goddard of the late 1700s and early 1800s. This is the second game table which I've designed. The first was built for a client who was looking for a lighter look to the piece. Instead of intricate inlays, it was the natural shimmer and chatoyance of the curly maple which made a decorative impact. My choice of superbly figured crotch mahogany veneer contained in an oval of holly stringing inlaid on a background of cross-banded mahogany makes an impressive visual impact. The feature common to both tables is the backgammon pit which will house the other game boards. This table has Louis XIV cube inlays of Swiss pearwood, Honduran mahogany, and sapili surrounded in a frame of gaboon ebony. The corner frames would be where candlesticks would have been placed for night play before the invention of incandescent lighting. The book match table surface is, highly, is highlighted with rectangular boxes of holly stringing. The backgammon board has a background of dyed poplar with points of curly sycamore and figured sapili. The neutral area is separated with bandings of curly maple and mahogany and the center bar is gaboon ebony with geometric inlays of holly. The checkerboard is made from wenge and curly maple and is banded with a thin width of yellow heart framed in African mahogany. The playing squares are two and a quarter inch which makes it U.S. Chess Federation tournament standard size. A set of checkers measuring an inch and three quarters in diameter were made of contrasting woods of Paduk and Yellowheart. The large square shape of the table lends itself to more two and four player games. However, the surface is large enough to accommodate a six player game of Chinese checkers. Triangles of dyed veneer match the colored marbles which were placed on a background of bird's eye maple and black lines connect the dimples. The Nine Man Morris board is a field of curly maple with dots of wenge joined by lines of yellow heart and purple heart. The pawns were turned in black walnut and bleached Honduran mahogany for contrast. The main desire for the table project was a worthy place to store my Parcheesi board. Not only is this my favorite game board, but as a youngster I devised a plan that I thought would work to accurately and in a timely manner produce a perfect rendition of a Parcheesi board in wood. The Parcheesi board consists of 610 segments of eight different species of wood. African mahogany, bloodwood, curly maple, gaboon ebony, holly, purple heart, Swiss pearwood, yellow heart, and is framed with sapili with a banding of curly maple, Honduran mahogany, and ebony. To prevent scratches on the game boards and game table surface from tumbling dice, I use leftover material from the table legs to create dice cups in which to roll the dice. The game boards fit comfortably in the table drawer for safe storage. The back of each board is equipped with hanging hardware so that the boards can be hung on a wall as decoration as well. I'm a believer in using top quality hardware. The ring poles I chose for the table have great details in the casting and have a great tactile feel to them. The drawer front is inlaid with black and white quadrant fans. The leg pilasters are adorned with sand shaded holly book inlays. The pierced brackets physically and visually connect the legs to the bottom rail and the table aprons. The square Marlboro legs have been hand carved with stopped flutes and reeds. This is a detail very reminiscent 
of Newport, Rhode Island furniture. A close-up view of the open drawer reveals cock beading on the edges and half-blind dovetails neatly prepared into the curly maple drawer sides. The table has two different finishes applied. The tabletop and all the game boards were finished with four coats of a marine grade spar varnish. One of the properties of a spar varnish is the ultraviolet protection will inhibit the natural colors of the materials from changing tone and color over time. I wanted the contrasting colors of the wood to remain as consistent as possible to when it was first made. The rest of the table has roughly 10 coats of shellac prepared in hand application in the French polish method. I almost always prefer a shellac finish over all others, but shellac is susceptible to damage from alcohol. This is a piece of furniture that will most likely see the use of alcohol around an arousing game of chance and any spillage would ruin the finish. Varnish is much more impervious to alcohol damage if spills are cleaned up swiftly. Finally, the sheen of the finish was muted with a coat of paste wax applied with steel wool. Flattening the gloss of the finish gave an almost soft, warm leather look to the wood. Thank you for taking the time to review the slideshow of my game table. Pr quite proud of it, and I'm quite proud to say that in the month of May, it will be on exhibit in the city of Boston from May 16th to May 31st. Anybody who's going to be in the Boston area, stop by to see the North Bennett Street School's annual celebration of craft. Thanks much. I hope you enjoyed my table.